In this demonstration, we shall explore the calculator's ability to plot curves using polar coordinates. To achieve this, we shall look at a few examples. Our first example will be to plot the polar function r of theta equals 3. And we begin with the following key sequence. We press 5 for graph. We press F3 for type. We press F2 for R equals. And we see that the Y1, Y2, et cetera, have been changed into R1 or R2. And this tells us we are now using polar coordinates. So let's put in our first example. So we have three and we enter that in. And we're gonna select the draw option to see a plot. And here we can see that this looks like an ellipse at uh, first glance. And the reason this uh, looks like an ellipse is because of the viewing window. The x-axis is longer than the y-axis. And if you look at the axes, you'll see that there's more spacing between the numbers on the x-axis than there is on the y-axis. And again, that's a result of a rectangular viewing window. So to fix this, to make it look more accurate, we can do the following. We hit shift and then F2. And then we hit F6 for the arrow over here telling us there's more options. And then we hit F2, the SQR, the squares up the window. And here we can see that now the spacing between the uh, numbers on the horizontal axis and the numbers on the vertical axis are about the same. And again, this resizes the window, so the X and Y uh, axes are kind of on the same scale. And we can check the viewing window uh, by pressing the following uh, buttons. So we hit Shift and then F3. And here we can see that X min is negative 20 and X max is 20. We have Y min at negative 10 and Y max at 10. And if I scroll up, I see the values for t theta min and t theta max, where t theta min is zero and t theta max is 6.28, which is two pi. And we see that the pitch is 0 0.0628, which is one over 100 times two pi. And these values basically tell us about the theta parameter, the uh, number of times it would go around a circle, uh, you know, completing one revolution, if you will. So let's look at another example. In this example, we're going to plot r of theta is actually equal to theta. So we're going to exit out of here. And we're going to exit out of here, and we're going to go ahead and replace our r1 with a new function. We'll go ahead and put in the theta. And we'll enter that in. And then we'll go ahead and plot this by again selecting the draw option. And we get this kind of window or this kind of graph. And this looks like the beginnings of a spiral. And this is known as the Archimedean spiral. But suppose we change the t theta min to negative pi. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of here. We're going to go to uh, v window, which is shift F3. And we're going to change that t theta min to negative pi. And you can find pi on the shift and then times 10 to the x button. We'll go ahead and exit out of here and we'll graph this thing again. And it looks a little bit different now. Okay, it looks like we have a little bit more activity going on around the pole or the origin. So let's zoom in. Go ahead and do shift F2 for zoom. We'll select F3 for in, and we'll go ahead and zoom in on that origin spot. And it looks like the spiral kind of maybe doubles back on itself. And, you know, so we're all getting a little bit more activity here. So let's change that T theta min to negative two pi. So we'll go ahead and do shift F3. We'll scroll up to the T theta min and this time we'll type in negative two and then pi. Again, pi is shift times 10 to the X key. 
And here we can see that now we have from negative two pi to two pi. And we'll go ahead and plot this. So we'll exit out of this window. We'll go back to the draw. And here we can see more of the Archimedean spiral. But where does this curve start? So let's trace it. To trace it, you hit Shift and F1. That's the trace command. And here we can see that it starts on the far left. When you activate the trace button, it will go to the first value in the window. And if we hit the uh, direction keypad, which is the big key uh, button up here, we can move along the curve. Okay. So let's look at another example. Suppose that R of theta is two times sine of theta. So we'll go ahead and exit out of here. We'll scroll up to R1 again, and we'll type in our new function, two sine theta. And we'll go ahead and plot this. And please uh, remember that you want to be in radian mode when you are plotting polar uh, functions. Okay, so here we kind of get a, a kind of a looks like a circle here. Let's zoom in around that pole. So we'll go ahead and do a shift F2 for zoom. And again, we'll hit zoom in, which is F3. And here we can see that we do have a circle, but it's not centered at the origin like R equal three was. It also appears to have a smaller radius. So you know, you don't have to have circles just centered at the origin. You can have circles just about anywhere you want in polar coordinates. So let's look at one more example to plot. In this example, it's going to be R of theta is two times cosine of four theta plus two. So we're going to exit out of here. We're going to scroll back up to R1, and we're going to type in our function, two cosine parenthesis four theta, closing parenthesis, plus two. And then we're going to go ahead and graph that. And that looks pretty interesting. But let's go back to a standard window. When we go back to a standard window, we hit sh uh, shift F3, and then we hit F3 again. That changes it to standard. And then we can go ahead and exit and plot it again. And again, we're getting that rectangular viewing window behavior going on. Things just seem to be stretched out along the x-axis. So let's square this up and then zoom in. So again, we'll go under uh, zoom, and then we'll go over to the SQR command. And here things are now a little bit more symmetric. And then we'll go into zoom in at the origin. And here we can see that we have a flower. And this is known as a four petaled flower. So, and this is how you can utilize the Casio FX 9750 G3 calculator for polar plotting. Thank you for your time and attention.